Here's Matt with today's newsmaker. Thank you so much, Scott. Appreciate it. It was a, a heck of a debate last night. If you happen to tune into this one, the four major candidates were there for governor. And uh, well, we got to see what we got to see. Of course, Election Day tomorrow. Joining me now, a couple of political analysts to uh, well, go over last night's debate and talk a little bit about the big election coming up tomorrow. Jim Nickel, Jim Inkster. Good, Good to see you this morning, sir. Hey, Matt. Thank you so much for being with us. <laughs> I tuned into this thing last night, and I, it was almost like I was watching an LSU football game. I'm, I'm, I, was, I was standing up, I was sitting down, I'm like, you can't see, you did this. You... This debate, more than any of the others, really seemed to bring out a little bit more in the candidates. When you saw it, what did you see? Well, I agree. I mean, my compliments to Channel 9 and WWL, I thought it was the best format. With all due respect to my friends at LPB mm -hmm. and others, it really brought out the candidates. And also, my compliments to the candidates. I thought they were the most prepared of any debate. They really seemed they were on their game. All four of them, I thought, performed well. The key to debates is what comes out after sure. and, and what's the headline. And unfortunately, I think for the challengers, they didn't really land a, a real uh, a deadly blow to Mr. Jindal, and I thought he came out okay. But great debate, great format. You mentioned yeah. that to us yesterday as well. That no real clear winner, but Jindal did what he had to do. Well, Jindal, I think, won because there was no clear right. winner because wow. he's the leader and he's trying to run out the clock. It was a great debate, but it, it came less than 48 hours before the election, so there isn't a whole lot of time for these candidates to make any real inroads, and, and, the, and there's no buzz about what happened last night. There was no major gap, and Bobby Jindal didn't fall off the stage or anything <laughs> like that. So because of that, if the polls are right, then uh, he's probably kept what he had, and what he had is either pretty close to 50 percent or a little over 50 percent. So we'll see. The uh, the strategy here is to get into a runoff. Right. That's yeah. the that's the strategy by the other, the other three. Of course, Jindal would very, very much like to win in, in a primary. Has enough been done? Uh, by Jindal to win it outright? Has enough been done by the others to be that other guy? Yeah, well, well, four years ago, we thought Jindal had over 50% yes, against Kathleen sure Blanco. Did. Most people were predicting him to win in the final days of the campaign. This time around, most people are predicting <laughs> that he's a little over 50 for the primary Saturday. Now, he ended up with 48% last time. So he probably will end up somewhere between 48, 52, 53%, and it's just a question of whether or not. Uh, uh, he's in a runoff with one of the other candidates, or he's home free and there's no election on November 17th, but, but it's, uh, it's an inexact science. And who votes? That ultimately, Jim knows yeah. this, uh, it's, it's who you get out there to vote. That, that, that will ultimately determine whether or not we have an election on the 17th of November. Yeah. And of course, the election day is tomorrow. So what's going on now in those camps to influence those voters to get out there and vote? What goes on the day before an election? Well, all these candidates and uh, the sophisticated campaigns have ID'd their vote. They know mm -hmm. where their vote is, and now they're making plans to turn them out. I mean, if they've got a voter who they know votes on a regular basis, they're probably counting on that person to go vote. But there's a large group of people in Louisiana who vote every once in a while and they're going to call them today and remind them to go vote and then they're going to call them tomorrow and remind them to go vote and they're going to call them tomorrow evening and remind them to go vote there's going to be a big push through the telephones and through door knockings to get people to turn out but the funny thing about turnout in this race usually the governor's race drives the turnout sure, sure. i think this time it's going to be the opposite i think it's mm -hmm. going to be a bottom-up thing i think the hot sheriff's race oh, in east yes. baton rouge there's a ton of hot senate races around the state i mean if we had time we could go through them but i think the local races are going to drive turnout and I think all these campaigns right now are sitting in their offices saying, oh, my God. And really, it kind of gets to the point where there's only so much you can do. It's out of your hands, and it's a very, very nervous feeling. I would imagine that's not the feeling they want to have. That's an uneasy feeling for yeah. a candidate or the handlers, the team, to, to be in a position of, we can't do anything now. Try. Yeah, yeah. And some, some interesting things about last night. Bobby Jindal said John McKithen was his favorite guy. Yes, I guess. Uh, that, that was an, an answer I would have thought that would have come from Foster, Foster Campbell. Campbell. Right, right. He said he wanted to build I-49 North first. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it sounds like he's really appealing to the crowd in North Louisiana. He didn't do particularly well there four years ago. He only carried 12 parishes and traditionally Republican parishes north of Alexandria. He, he didn't fare well. So he's trying to solidify that base, something that he did not do in 2003 and interestingly I think there were probably 20 references to Gina last night and sure how were. many references were there to New Orleans right well and you know the other thing that's interesting that's if you want to look for something Saturday night watch those early returns from those northern parishes go online the Secretary of State's website they'll post them and maybe we'll watch them here in the studio mm -hmm. but if, if Jindal does well in North Louisiana which he didn't do as well last time Look for him to win Saturday night. That'll be an early indication. He's polling at about 57% up there uh, recently. One of our latest, one of our polls, our latest poll showed him about 57%, so considerably better than he did last, yes. last time around. And his base is in South Louisiana. Right. So if he does well there, you got to figure that he's going to do well. Right. 
my gosh. throughout the state. <laughs> we don't have that. We don't have that much longer to wait, do we? It's just no. right around. It's like Christmas around here. Uh, the negative campaign ads. We've seen this. Uh, we see it every election cycle, and this year it, it has taken a little bit of a different turn. Some of the comedic. Uh, negative ads. We asked the viewers, our viewers, if this does influence your vote. 41% yes, 59% no. So maybe the true message is get your message out. Don't worry about what the other guy is saying. Well, I, I hate to say it, but it works. It's, yeah, why, they, it's yeah. why they use it. Certainly. I mean, it's very, very effective, particularly if it's done right. And you, we've seen it by all the candidates. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, I think the Jindal campaign has been brilliant in that they've been way ahead. But instead of sitting on that lead, when they saw Boisseau coming up, they swatted him down. When they saw Georges coming up, they swatted him down. They're, they're keeping this from being a two-man race. Negative ads work. That's why we use them. Everything's online for you. If you need to hit there, go ahead. Uh, all the sample ballots, the candidate profiles, the, the, the gads. Jim Inkster, Jim Nickel, Clay Young, Julie Baxter are going to be with us election night with some expert insight. Uh, so you get to see these guys even more. But let me tell you, they know what they're talking about. We're happy to uh, have them a part of the team. Wouldn't be able to do it without them. Jim Nickel, good to Talk see to you, you as always. Take care, man. Jim Nickster, thank you so see much you. for your time. Heck of a day coming tomorrow. You got it's going to be a long one, going to be a great one. All right, stay with us right here on 9 News this morning, 6.46 your time. We'll see you in a minute.